It's a pleasure, a great pleasure to have you here. So Nathan is a, is a major expert in condensed matter and also in particle physics. And uh, he has a specific expertise on low dimensional systems. And he's uh, one of the masters of this um, special techniques that we can use in one dimension, like bosonization and beta ansatz. So um, I think he's probably everywhere uh, in the world known for his solution of the condo model, but he has provided uh, many more uh, important results. So it's a great pleasure to have you here in our Atomtronics conference once again, and uh, I let uh, you the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Anna, and thank you all the organizers for this wonderful conference and for inviting me. So as Anna said, I'll be talking about the low dimensional system, one dimensional system. I will uh, present a very theoretical talk, but uh, the theory is about actual systems that exist. So there are a lot of experimental realizations of the uh, more abstract mathematical structures that I will be discussing. In particular, I'll be talking about uh, systems like the Luttinger liquid, like one dimensional superconductors and one dimensional systems not are particul of particular interest for theorists because uh, quantum fluctuations are enhanced in low dimensions which means all the interactions in low dimensions are in a sense strong. And as a result, in low dimensions, one has a lot of phases that in higher dimension, one needs to go to very strong coupling. That makes low dimensional systems not only practical, but also theoretically very interesting. So I will talk about systems that are a typically called Latinger liquids. These are systems that are realized in a lot of different ways. In particular, nanotubes are an example. These are rolled up graphene where uh, the direction of motion is enhanced in one dimension. And I'll be interested in not only those interacting one dimensional system, but in impurities in them, how they are modified by those interactions in one dimensions. So of course, impurities in uh, systems are, it's a very old topic, but typically such impurities are, have been studied extensively in metals. Now metals are described by a Fermi liquid gas of electrons, which are essentially free. But if there are interactions in those uh, host metals, then new, phases and new properties emerge, and that is the subject of my interest. So example of a Fermi liquid uh, with an impurity is provided by cold atoms, and these are the type of systems I would be interested in. Uh, so here's the plan of my talk. I will be talking mainly about two bulk environment, two one-dimensional system, the Latinger liquid, which I'll define and explain what it is, uh, or a superconducting wire. So here, uh, the Luttinger liquid is a system where you have left, right moving spinless uh, particles. They interact. And what is so interesting about the Luttinger liquid is that for every, even a weak interaction, the fermionic spectrum is completely destroyed. And we have remaining, the only excitations are bosonic-like. The superconducting wire is of course very well known, has a very rich physics. I will attach a condo impurity here at the end. Uh, in, for the Latinger liquid, I'll attach a quantum dot in the end or a scattering center. So what I, the way I will study those systems is by a providing exact solutions. I will show how to construct eigenstates. Once we have the eigenstates and the spectrum, we can obtain the thermodynamics. We can calculate a lot of physical uh, quantities, sorry, uh, like uh, the magnetization, uh, dot filling, uh, and so on. 
let me start by introducing a Dilatinger liquid. So Dilatinger Hamiltonian is a low energy effective theory of many interacting one dimensional systems. For example, the Heisenberg XXZ Hamiltonian, the Hubbard model, the Liebliniger model, all of those models, when you study them at very low energy, they have kind of a universal description in terms of what is called a Latinger Hamiltonian. Uh, the Latinger Hamiltonian consists of right and left moving particles. Here is the kinetic term. And the interaction is density, density, density of the right mover, density of the left movers. And th this model has been studied a lot and it's very well understood. What is so uh, surprising in this model First, that there is a universal model that describes a large number of uh, physical systems when you look at low energy and you can match the original parameters of the theory, let's say the uh, Heisenberg model, the original coupling, you can match to the two parameters, G, uh, the coupling constant and VF, the velocity. And by doing exact solution or renormalization group, or you can uh, obtain it by doing what is I call a shortcut by linearizing. You take the spectrum and you say, I'm interested only in low energy. So I'm looking at the neighborhood of the Fermi momenta KF and minus KF linearizing here. Then I write the general uh, field as a, in terms of low energy modes, psi plus the right mover uh, and the modes around KF and the left mover and the modes around, here's the left mover with the modes around minus KF. Or you can think about looking at the full spectrum of the problem and then concentrating on those low energy modes here, which are linear and forgetting about the rest. So the low energy approximation is valid as long as you look at quantities like temperature and momentum that are very small compared to the bandwidth, in which case in this region, uh, the validity of the Latinger liquid approximation uh, is uh, acceptable. And uh, when you study this model, what is so interesting is that this model although it's written in terms of fermionic variables, psi plus, psi minus, is actually the spectrum is bosonic. You can uh, bosonize the model exactly. And then you see that the model consists just of free bosons, but with a, a coupling constant K, which is related to the original coupling constant uh, for small g, as one minus two G over pi. So that when, if you start with an attractive model, a K would be larger than one or a repulsive interaction K would be less than one. And K equals to one means that the original model has no interaction that it's free fermions. So again, as I said, this kind of a system is realized in a lot of experimental systems. Uh, for example, here is a nanotube, or you can think about a quantum wire or a Heisenberg model. All of these are uh, described by Latinger uh, theory at low energies. Now, I'm in, I'll take this Latinger liquid and put in a scatterer. So this was first proposed by Kane and Fisher. So you put here a scatterer. And the scatterer uh, now takes a left mover and scatters it to a right mover, or it takes a right mover and scatters it to a left mover. So a left mover comes in, it scatters back to a right mover. A, a right mover is scattered to a left mover. Now, th this is a, a, a small scatter, but it has quite dramatic effects. The reason is I take a scatterer from right, move it to a left. So the whole interaction in the system changes. 
And this is very important because that means that this makes it into a quantum impurity. A quantum impurity means that uh, once one particle crosses the impurity, the next one will find a totally different system. So they are all becoming correlated through this quantum impurity. It's very different if you have a fixed potential, every particle that scatters comes along, leaves it unchanged. So the next particle finds it in the same state. Here, the, the system all the time changes if a particle crosses. And another model I want I want to discuss is when I attach a quantum dot at the edge. So I'm talking about a system with an edge. I put a boundary condition that a right mover that comes in is scattered into a left mover. And um, now this has then a, an edge and I can put here a quantum dot. The particles can hop from the edge to the dot or back. So there is a, the dot level, what energy the dot is at, it's epsilon naught. There is the tunneling amplitude a, describing hopping to the dot, namely going from psi dagger to D or from D to psi dagger a, to the right or left movers. And there is a, an interaction term D dagger D times the density at the edge. In other words, when there is an electron here and an electron here, they repulse each other. So that's the Coulomb repulsion edge dot. And of course, one can have many other very interesting geometries. For example, if the dot is embedded, so you can uh, have conductance across the dot, which is of course a, a very interesting problem, or you can have a side coupled dot. Uh, and what's interesting in these systems is, again, uh, here you have the spectrum, as I said, consists of bosonic modes, uh, collective bosonic modes, but the tunneling is via fermions. So there is a, the bosons have to recohere to form a bo bosonic excitations in order to tunnel. So there is an interesting interplay between tunneling and interaction. And there are many examples, as I said. So here is the local mode, psi dagger psi. When I look at low uh, energy, I expand the field psi in terms of right and left mover, plug it in, and I get this term. So I have the term where I have left scatters to right or right scatters to left. And I have some trivial terms where a left remains left and right remains right. These I'll drop because they don't make much of a difference. And as, as I said, if you take a spin chain and for example, change the coupling constant at one site. So J prime is uh, somewhat modified compared to the others, this will now at low energy be a Luttinger liquid with, a, uh, with an impurity. And there are many other realizations. Uh, you, you can do it with a one dimensional coherent conductor and with an impedance and this is a map to a Luttinger liquid or at an edge of a quantum hole or now most recently a cold atom realization. Or you can think about a, a nanotube here, a carbon nanotube, if you see here this line, and here you put electrodes and this is like a quantum dot embedded or an embedding here a, where you have a, a quantum hole system and here you put in an impurity and these are the edges and this is again an embedded a, quantum dot in a Latin Jaluk. The second environment that I will talk about is the uh, superconductor. Now you have, again, left and right movers, uh, which can be linearized. And uh, I'm also going to introduce an edge. So I have to put in a boundary condition, 
again, a left mover hits the edge and is becoming a right mover. So that is the boundary condition here. And there is bulk interaction in the wire. A, it's a, an attractive spin exchange interaction. And it, a, for positive coupling, it generates a gap, a superconducting gap. And you can um, exactly solve this model or do RG. And you find that a superconducting gap is um, generated a delta equals to 2D e to the minus pi over G, where G is the coupling constant. Now, the dot, the impurity that I will attach to this superconductor is a condo impurity. So I attach it here at the edge, and I can have spin flips between the impurity and the spin, the effective electron spin at the edge. This is described by, this is the electron impurity of the bulk dotted into the spin. So this is a standard condo interaction, but now unlike the very traditional study of condo where you have a, a gas of free electrons, now they are, so, uh, they, they interact and uh, um, generate a gap. And then this becomes a very, very rich system. Uh, you have, turns out, so the system is then characterized by two coupling constants. One is the bulk interaction, G, and one is the local condo superconductor. And we will find that the interplay, the strength between G and J leads to a very, a rich phase diagram. Uh, so in the bulk, we always are going to have a gap, delta equals to that expression, but the impurity, and of course, one impurity does not affect the bulk properties, but the bulk properties are going to affect the impurity, and that will depend on the magnitude of J compared to G. And that is going to be determined by this renormalization group invariant D. So if J, for example, is very large compared to G, then we are in the condo regime. We will see that the impurity is going to be screened by an effective condo screening, a many body effect that is going to generate a condo scale, which is going to be much larger than the impurity, than the, than the gap, the superconducting gap delta. So here it's for the, in this regime where J is very large compared to G, TK is very large compared to delta. Then there is another regime where J is of order G. Uh, this is called the mid gap regime. Uh, this particular regime has been studied uh, extensively since the 70s by mean field theory, by a DMRG, density matrix normalization group, and uh, people have done some work which I find a little bit confusing because there, it, it turns out that there is level crossing, which I think people have uh, identified often as a condo phase transition while the condo regime actually is further away. So in this uh, Shiba mid-gap regime, uh, there is no condo scale generated, but there is local spin accumulation, which for a certain range will screen the impurity. And then there is the regime where J is weak, and that is compared to G, that's the local moment regime, the impurity is unscreened. So as I said, you get a very rich phase diagram, which I'm going to discuss in more detail towards the end. So here it is, a J is for fixed G, J here is large and becomes weaker and weaker. So here you have the strongly coupled a regime. Here you have the condo phase, TK is generated and it's very large compared to a, 
the gap, there is a many body screening, a condo cloud, and it, the, it's screened. When you reduce J, uh, uh, then at the point where this D combination becomes equal to zero here, then the condo effect stops acting and you have a new mechanism. Uh, it turns out it, the impurity is screened, no gap is generated, but the screening is due to local spin accumulation. If you keep reducing it, then this quantity D becomes uh, imaginary. And then you move into what we call the Shiba phase. In the Shiba phase, you have again spin accumulation describing. You have this mode here where the impurity is still screened, but it's a totally different mechanism than in the condo. And when you keep weakening the coupling constant J, you cross over to another ground state. So there is a level crossing here. And here, the, the ground state is going to have spin half. And again, keeping weakening it, a, the, the ground state does not change, but the nature of the excitations is going to change. So for example, here, for a, a, in the ground state of this unscreened phase, you have a, the impurity is unscreened and it's going to a, it have excite, and the system will have excitations which have a carry spin half, combining then with the spin half of the impurity, the total excitations are going to have a big singlet or triplet with propagating modes. And again, now if I move back and I strengthen the coupling constant J, some of these modes are going to be captured and become local modes around the impurity, which eventually are going to completely screen it and move to a new ground state. Now, I just want to advertise other systems that we are working on, very interesting systems. A condo where you have two impurity, it turns out it's again, very, very rich system. New phases arise by, and kind of topological modes arise from the a correlation between these two spins. Or there is the Y junction problem where you have several Luttinger liquid coupled at one point. Uh, we have, we are also interested, for example, what happens to an impurity when you have a helical lump, Luttinger liquid at the edge of a two dimensional superconductors, or what happens if you have a kind of a ring, and this is kind of a small condo lattice, how are what is the magnetic uh, correlations that arise by electron exchange on such a ring? Okay, uh, so let me start by discussing the Kane Fisher model. So, the Kane Fisher model, as I said, consists of a kinetic term, right left moving, a linear spectrum, interaction, density, density interaction totally destroys the fermionic spectrum. And I've introduced here a, an impurity that scatters left to right. So again, a, the Kane-Fisher model can be bosonized and then a, the, Kane, the bulk term becomes, looks like free fermions and the a, impurity looks like a cosine phi at zero, phi is the bosonic field that describes the system. Uh, and you can, this uh, relation between the two Hamiltonian is exact. It's given by a bosonization. And it was shown that by Kane and Fisher that um, if you study now the low energy physics of this coupling constant, then it is going to run. And the idea is very simple. You do the RG, you go to very low energy, namely you reduce D. You see that you have a term here, one minus K times U. K for 
attract a for repulsive is less than one. So this term here is positive. That means U grows and flows away from the fixed coupling. Now, the question is, where does it flow? Does it flow to infinity or not? If it flows to infinity, then the impurity will cut, a complete, will cut the wire. And then we have to, uh, and if we cut the wire, we can describe the strong coupling fixed point by two wires that are cut. And the question is, then, does a, the perturbation around this density density perturbation that allows hopping from here to here, is it repulsive or uh, attractive? If it is repulsive, then we are going to move back and we'll have a non-trivial fixed point in the middle of the RG flow. If it uh, is irrelevant, then we are going to flow to strong coupling. So you do the RG and again, you have now a minus sign. One minus K is positive. So that shows that indeed this is irrelevant and you flow to strong coupling. So this is a very beautiful RG analysis that shows that the model is flowing to strong coupling. Uh, what I want to do is very quickly show how to um, solve this model exactly. An exact solution, of course, gives much more information and uh, it's a, uh, However, as you see, it requires very new uh, ideas about how to solve models. So how does, I, I, I want to give a 10 minutes talk about beta ansatz. What do you do when you do beta ansatz? It's very simple. You take the model, you solve for one particle uh, eigenstates, then you, uh, once you understand the one particle, you go to two particles. You construct the two particle wave functions out of single particle wave function. Then you check, can you go on to three particles that turn out that there are consistency conditions uh, called Young-Baxter consistency conditions, which if they are satisfied, then you can uh, generalize your solutions to any number of particles. So let me start then. One particle eigenstates consists of a modes on the right of a plane wave E i k x and E minus i k x on the right and E i k x minus k x of the left of the impurity. So you have right movers here with E i k x, left movers uh, with E minus i k x. And these are the amplitudes. One zero means one is to the left of zero. Zero one means one is to the right of zero. So obviously this is a, a first year quantum mechanics problem to find the single particle Hamiltonian and you plug it into the a wave function, you plug it into the Hamiltonian and you find that this becomes an eigenstate if these four amplitudes, a one zero plus one zero minus zero one plus zero one minus are related by a scattering S matrix and that you obtain from the Hamiltonian where the scattering matrix is written down here. Okay, so you do that. Uh, now you go to two particles. So two particles could be written away from the two, from the impurity. Uh, and then there is no impurity. You have to solve just the Lattinger Hamiltonian. And th then you can look at right, left, right movers, right, right movers, left, left movers. So let me look at right, right movers. So I have psi dagger plus right, psi dagger minus, plug into the Hamiltonian, a, obtain a Schrodinger equation, which is very easy to solve. You solve it. A, so you have a right mover, a left mover mode, and you have a, and you say, if they are on, if one is to the left of two, you have an amplitude A, you cross it, pick up a phase shift from here, and the phase shift is e to the i phi, one minus i g, one plus i g, and you do it for the four combinations, you get this S matrix. Now, so we are successful in solving for two particles. Now we want to put it together. How do you put it together? 
you take all the orderings, uh, one, two, zero, one, zero, two, and so on. The, so you have three factorial regions, two, two electrons plus one impurity, and you want to write down a wave function that consists of all these uh, regions, which you stitch together, but you have to stitch together in a consistent way. So for example, suppose you start from uh, the region where particle one is to the left of two, to the left of zero, uh, you move to the part, uh, region where part you exchange one and two, this costs you S matrix one, two, then you switch, bring one across zero, you have the S matrix one, zero, now you are in the region two, zero, one, uh, now you bring two across zero, cos you S matrix a uh, two, zero, and you are in the region zero, two, one. Now you can do the same, but in different order. First you cross two, zero, then you cross one crosses zero, then you exchange one and two and come to the same region. That means in order, if you want to have consistency, this kind of relationship among the S matrices must be satisfied. This is called the Young-Baxter relations. Here are Young and Baxter who wrote it down first. These are kind of braiding relations which underlie uh, this uh, consi consistency condition and integrability. Turns out that if you do that, we have all the S matrices, it is violated. And uh, this is a bit shocking until you think and you realize that what we did here, the traditional way, actually we did not take all the physics into account. So why is Young-Baxter relation violated? Because we did it wrong. Uh, and it turns out that this partition did not take account the full physics. So let us look at two particles, X1 and X2. And you see there is a, and here again, X1 and X2, but here X2 is closer to the impurity than X1. It would reach the impurity before X1 reaches. And here X2 is going to reach it before, after X1 reaches it. But if X1 reaches the impurity uh, before X2, X2 is going to find a different environment because we have the term, because the left right a number is going to change it's going to be it's going to be scattered from left to right and therefore the interaction is going to change and x2 if it comes a uh, after x a uh, after x1 reaches then it's going to see a different environment which means that we have to um, split space not into n factorial but into all the orderings also away from the impurity. So it gives us two to the n factorial, two to the n times n factorial regions. And we have to introduce S matrix to take care of all of this. And we have a new type of consistency that arises when we take all of this. Um, so we introduce it and this becomes a new type of algebra, generalized Young-Baxter algebra that is a, a also known as a reflection equation, a reflection a algebra. And now that we do all of this, we can generalize this from two particles to n particles, write down a beta ansatz, write down all the S matrices. This I have already introduced. This is the S matrix that takes into account which particle reaches the impurity first. You generalize it, you get a new type of Young-Baxter and reflection algebra, and this allows you to write down the beta ansatz in a consistent way. And then once you have written down the beta ansatz in a consistent way, you can obtain the uh, energy um, eigenvalue by summing over these modes kj. Okay, now that th this is the solution in the infinite volume, but if you want to uh, calculate 
thermodynamics and so on, you have to put it on a ring. This would quantize the momenta. This would allow you to order the states, find what is the ground state, what are the excitations. So you have to put it on a ring and then you can either study it on a finite system or on an infinite system. So you do that, you impose, let's say, a periodicity, then uh, this periodicity means that you take one particle, move it around and bring it back, which means you have to cross a lot of S matrices. You get here then a product of these S matrices and you come back and pick up your phase. So you are faced now with a new problem, how to diagonalize uh, this transfer matrix, which consists of product of these S matrices. Nathan, so here, uh, five minutes. Oh, my God. Okay. So you solve it and you have a new, new physics arising. You have a dynamically, so this model has dynamically generated scale, TK, which is given by the cutoff and the coupling constant. And this coupling constant then uh, is a running coupling constant. Uh, if you increase D, then you must be, get a dependence on the coupling constant. And you see that U of D is going to flow to infinity as D goes to zero. You are going to have a low energy, a strong coupling theory. So the, coup the coupling constant flows from weak to strong coupling, and it allows the solution allows you now to calculate many properties of the systems. You can find how the entropy, for example, changes as flow uh, going from weak coupling to strong coupling, how the specific heat changes, how the uh, what is the specific heat, what are the critical exponents. Uh, how does the conductance change? Uh, so you get a full description of the system. Okay, I will skip all of this. Unfortunately, I miscalculated. I'm talking too much. Uh, very, so he, let me go to very recent work, uh, the condo impurity at the edge of a superconductor. Uh, again, here is the Hamiltonian, the kinetic term, the superconducting term, and the condo coupling. Uh, again, you construct an eigenstate by matching together regions. Here is the uh, interaction among the electrons. Here is the interaction. Uh, this generates the superconductivity. This generates hopping to the dot. Very beautiful beta ansatz equations and a lot of results emerge immediately. Gapped spin half excitation, these are the modes that exist. A mid gap excitation, local edge excitations, we get a very rich spectrum. And um, what you find then, okay, let me skip here. Uh, again, the phase diagram, which is kind of very rich, and we are still exploring uh, some of the details. This is kind of the condo phase as I uh, described before. Here is again where the impurity is screened. Uh, here, TK is very large compared to Delta. As we are reducing um, the J coupling, the condo uh, scale is moving down at when uh, D, this invariant is equal to zero, namely G is equal to J, then uh, we have no longer condo screening. The TK is going to become equal to Delta. And we have then a screening only by a local capture of a single electrons on the dot. This is very often, if you are uh, studying the model on the lattice, this is kind of mocked up by having a bound state. Although in the continuum, 
it shows up as density distribution localized at the impurity. And so that the ground state is given by a singlet. You keep reducing a J with respect to G, then you get to totally new mode, the Shiba phase. And the Shiba phase um, it is, it has a continuous version where still the ground state is a, a singlet, but the excitations now are not fully gapped. That's why it's called a mid-gap excitations. Uh, this is an under unscreened impurity excitations. Namely, once I excite an excitation, it's going to uh, have net spin, unlike the situation where I have here in this phase, a unscreened a impurity where the excitations can combine with it to get singlets and triplets. Okay, since my time is running out, I will uh, just show pictures. You can calculate how the magnetization uh, is in different phases, density of states in different regimes. So a, a lot, a lot of physics we can get out of it. Uh, much of it could be tested experimentally, let's say by local STM that would look at the system, look at density of states or a magnetic a magnetization. So let me conclude. Um, we solved the beta ansatz, uh, the Kane Fisher model, exactly by producing a new type of beta ansatz generalizing uh, the more traditional approach. Uh, I've not talked about the dot wire model where we have various geometries and we can um, solve exactly the model, find the RG flow, uh, understand the full thermodynamic properties of the model, or this I, very briefly, I talked about the superconducting interacting wires. So there are a lot of things to do, a, a, in particular generalized a Y problem. The Y junction is very interesting. Now you have N junction. This has a lot of implication in quantum information theories, which are very interesting. Um, we uh, very interesting would be to generalize all this to an isotropic system, the systems that I've looked at were spin isotropic SU2, when you break it down to U1, you get whole new physics, in particular, you can get uh, topological excitations at the edges, which are Majorana excitations, and their interplay with the Kondo uh, impurity would be fascinating. And you can study the system also out of equilibrium. Uh, you can ask question how, what would happen if at time t equals to zero, I take the dot, attach it to the system. How does the system evolve? Uh, how do, uh, it's kind of a generalized extra edge problem. Uh, you can ask questions about transport at finite volume, consistent current, or uh, questions like Floquet system where you drive them and how do this, you take the dot, let's say, and shake it and ask what is the dynamics. So many of these questions are still open and very fascinating. So, sorry, I ran over time. Thank you very much, that's the end. Thank you very much, Nathan. Uh, it's a really uh, beautiful <laughs> result. Um, I see that already there are two questions, so... It's Angela Foster. Hi, Angela. Angela, can you, she be... Yes, she has been oh. included in the panelists. So, Angela, you can ask your question directly. So, hi, hi Nathan. Angela. Hi, so Angela, great how are you? Yeah, good <laughs> <laughs> So, really Thanks. nice to see the examples where the off-diagonal beta analysis approach can yeah. be used to solve yes, physically yes. relevant problems. You usually see it, see them just in so mathematical context. So it's really, yeah. really nice to yeah, see. It, the, the, yeah. This method came just in time for us because yeah. we were getting this kind of, a, we were trying to solve this and the traditional yeah. uh, 
quantum inverse scattering did not function for us because they, there was no uh, starting point. There was no uh, initial state from which we reference state that we could find. And then the, uh, the beta ansatz, the off diagonal beta ansatz method just yeah. was perfect for us. So it was really yeah. a good time. Yeah, you need, really need the reflection equations in the whole. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Yeah, I, all I see these problems in mathematics. So I really seen them in physics. So uh, in the structure of the bit and the solution of your systems, do you have uh, uh, string solutions, real uh, solutions? So have you solved the bit and equations for you, these two models? Or? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we have solved them exactly. I, I will send you references. Ah, good, that's amazing. So you also have the strings, yeah? You have we have the solutions. strings, we have, we have strings of various lengths and, yeah. then, and the nature of the strings changes when you change ah. the coupling constant. There are various regimes and oh. you have to be able to put them together. I, I'll, se I'll send you all that. Interesting. So you could classify the regimes by the structure of the bit and the solutions. That it, is very exactly. nice. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah? And, and for the models, uh, can, can you say which are the conserved quantities or? No. No? No, no that, that's a very interesting question. I can solve mm -hmm. it, but yeah. I have never been able to, con for example, even to, for an old problem like the condo problem, I don't know what the conserved quantities are, mm -hmm. but it's but I can, important. but I know they exist because I can construct mm -hmm. consistent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, yeah, that's really very important question. Yeah, yes. it's, yeah to that's... find these conserved quantities because you have a physical problem. So, which are the conserved quantities? Yeah, that's... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know the number? How many you have in each case? Or I must have an infinite number because uh -huh. uh, I have a, yeah. a, a, a complete exact solution. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to study things like thermalization or things like that, we really would need them. Yeah. I, I, that's correct. Yeah. Well, I can start thermalization without. Well, mm -hmm. I can start thermalization by looking at wave function and studying how they evolve, yeah. and then identify. But. Uh, you, uh, yeah, I, it would be very useful to get those uh, yeah. conserved quantities, but I, I've never been, I, I never thought really deeply about this question, but yeah. I, I just solved the wave function. So, and when you solve and then you find the spectrum, the wave function, can you see, can you prove completeness of your solutions? Uh, so in some cases, uh, well, you can do completeness. Uh, it's a lot of work, but I, I, I can have a very quick argument wh why they are complete. Uh, for example, I can calculate the physical S matrix of the excitations. And when I calculate these physical S matrices, I see that they satisfy all properties that are necessary, a uh, unitarity crossing and so on and so forth which would not be the case if I did not have a complete set of solutions. Mm -hmm. But yes. this is a round, roundabout way. But there are mm -hmm. paper, for example, by Alex Hewson, who just counted the number of solutions and showed that they mm -hmm. are complete. Oh, great. OK, so really great talk. Nice to see you and please send nice me to the, see you. the works. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so we should um, then leave the word to Maxim and then Luigi, and then I think uh, we will keep the other questions for later. So, Maxim, please. Yeah, I'll try, try to be brief. So, Nathan, thanks Hi. for this. For the, this, this was really an enrichment talk. Uh, so, I have, I have sort of a more metaphysical question. So, about the division between, um, between the young Baxter condition and the reflection symmetries of the underlying Hamiltonian, uh, underlying many body Hamiltonian. So, so if, you, if one takes, say, a mixture of two one dimensional bosonic atoms with, slightly, with two slightly different masses, what one finds is that three particles collide and they produce a completely different set of momenta. So, for you, just at the philosophical level, 
would it be a violation of the young boxer, boxer condition or the destruction of the very base on which you can build the young boxer condition in, in the future? So, so that's that's well, the question. So let me see if I understand. So you, you say I do calculation and I see that the three particles, when they come in, they come out with different momenta than when they came in. With, a, with three completely different momenta, yes. Then so. it's violation of integrability. Right, but, but for and, you, would you would you include it in, in the violation of the young Baxter condition, or it uh, comes it comes before? I mean, what's no? I I, I would think that uh, that, that that would be. I, I, I would say simply the model is not integrable. Uh, if I could take this into account, this would be a major, major breakthrough. Right. Because that would open up the door to many more models. But I, I, I have no idea how to do that. Yeah, the, the, the reason why I mentioned the young Baxter is because in this case, the, out, the outgoing set of momenta will depend on the order of the collisions. That's the, 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 in, well, in some sense, it resembles the young box. So, okay, so so it depends. If it if it is, however, the same number and the okay. same values, but just in different orders, then it's probably integrable. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. only if they have different values from those that come okay. in or a different number, then okay. it's not okay. integrable. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks. Yeah, I've spent some time on reflection, the underlying reflection groups. Yeah. Th thanks again. Thank you, Luigi. Thank you. Yeah, Luigi, ask uh, your question. Yes, Nathan. I have uh, uh, four questions. Four. Great. Say, two, two of physics, and uh, I, I, I try to be brief. Say, uh, you said that actually, actually when uh, G, uh, G uh, uh, is um, small, much smaller, so interaction is much smaller than the condo coupling, then you go to the condo coupling. In the case of superconductor, I'm talking about superconductor. Okay? Yes, then I, we yeah. are in the condo phase. Yes, I, I do not fully understand because, uh, so we, so uh, say if you have a metal, then you are in condo phase, right? But we know that any attraction, any G, even if it is small, it's so the Fermi, the Fermi C is unstable, right? So how yeah. come and you do not have any trace in the condo? So it should be a little bit different from what the, the condo model that you have in the metal. This is the first question. No, I, 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 I didn't understand. So I, I have a metal. Yes, no, if you have a metal, and, yes. If you have I metal, turn on attractive interaction and I go, have a superconductor. Indeed, okay. And then- and now uh, I put a condo impurity. Yes, very good. Uh, but the condo impurity coupling is larger than yes. G. So TK yes, is agree. larger than the gap. I agree. Ah, okay. Ah, so it's uh, larger than the gap. Yes. That ah, is the okay. okay. So, that okay. Is... Then you don't see the superconductor, basically. Well, okay. Uh, yeah. Now, I have just one impurity. It doesn't do anything to the. So, there, there, are all, there are a lot, a lot of questions. If you have many impurities, then people ask, do the impurities destroy superconductivity? That is not the type of question I'm asking. No, 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 no. But I, I, mean, I have uh, just one impurity. Mm -hmm. And of course, one impurity is not going to destroy, and no, one impurity is not going to destroy superconductivity. So yes. the question is, what does superconductivity do to the impurity? I uh, I didn't have any doubt that actually the impurity destroys superconductivity. It's not that one. So I'm a bit uh, surprised that you do not have uh, any difference between a condo model in a metal and a condo model in a, say, with the G attracting G electrons, even if it is small. Because if you have a metal and you increase, uh, if you add any, any attraction, the Fermi mm. surface, the Fermi liquid this is There is no, right? so the, we, we have no Fermi surface. We and have. The, I'm surprised that you do not see any difference with the normal condo. No, th there is difference. Uh -huh. There are a lot of differences, but uh, which I didn't, which I showed only at the end. So you have, however, 
So what you do have is kind of a smooth analytic. Imagine delta going from zero to finite value. So at zero, it's simple metal. Yes. And if you erase delta a little, yes. so it's far below TK, then it smoothly co properties continue. Okay. It's only if delta, uh, uh, if delta approaches TK, then new properties emerge. Okay. Okay. And okay. If, de yes. if delta crosses it, then we are in the Shiba okay. phase or other phases, but in the condo phase itself, what we would find, however, of course, uh, if you look at the density of states, you, mm -hmm. you find that the density of states, uh, I, I showed it very quickly, is negative, is reduced. And so there are many, many beautiful properties that are different, but it, they are different in detail. Okay. No, not, okay. okay. Okay, say I say I think I, I believe that we have a time problem. I go to yes. Okay. I go to the technical question. Okay. Rapidly, so very rapidly, your, Luigi. I mean, yes. Anna, okay. Anna is the boss. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, Last. So, um, I did not uh, uh, understand in, uh, in so as you know. I think if you write uh, if you if you solve X Y Z model, I think you have the same problem. You have the so now I I put the eight, uh, so I talk uh, with the with the jargon right. So you take uh, X, Y, Z, uh, and you know, you don't have the vacuum state. I think you have to make this uh, unitary transform, you do this, uh, this rotation to conserve, and then you construct the better answer. Yes. No, I didn't see in your treatment uh, that the, point, that point, I didn't see. So where is where your diagonal? That's precisely what I was discussing with Angela. Uh, okay. I, I, I used a different approach a called off diagonal beta ansatz. Yeah. And this off diagonal beta ansatz uh, allows you, again, I'll be technical, to write down TQ equations and to solve many of these problems where you don't have reference state. That is. I'm, I'm familiar, uh, another. I think the only thing is that I don't see in your slides when you made, you made this, this, this trick. So, well, where did you do this trick? Oh, uh, I, can, can I go back? Yes, well, please. Uh, I did not explain it because it was too technical, but I, I'll, so it's all hidden here. Ah, sorry, okay. Okay, so I saw Sklian in. Yeah, yeah, of course. So is it the same, so this, when you insert this T, is K, it's a Sklianian approach? Yes. Okay. So you have this, and then I very quickly said, I have to diagonalize this problem and I skipped it. A, okay. what, what I said, there is the a quantum inverse scattering, okay. a, which actually was not useful for us, but the off diagonal beta ansatz, a, this is a, a book came yeah, yeah. out by yes. these four when Chinese. They, I understand, just, when you have the, the KHR off diagonal. The, the yeah, exactly. Yes. yes. Okay, I see. I see. I understand. I understand. Thank you. Okay, so I am very sorry to cut the, no, no, the no, question. Uh, but okay. we have to move on to listen to Roberta now. So, Beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes.